Silver Hawaii! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high yo silver. The Lone Ranger. The first settlers to penetrate the mountainous regions of the western United States found the territory rich in gold and silver. The news of this discovery brought an army of prospectors, many of them hardened criminals, and in the boom town, sudden death became as common as sudden wealth. It was here that the Lone Ranger faced his greatest task and won his greatest victory. No one with less strength and courage could have brought law and order to that lawless frontier. No one but the heroic masked rider could have made the country safe for honest men and women. Return with us now those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the mountain! Hi-ho, Silver! Away! The Lone Ranger, disguised, was present in the cafe at Aurora when two young men excitedly entered. Both gave evidence of many days spent in the hills, and the first, Jim Graves, held a fragment of rock in his hand. Hey, fellas, look here. We struck it. Me and Bob struck it rich. Gold. Just take a look. Gold, Gold. Hey, that's news. Never heard of gold around here before. Not the word nothing but silver and copper. Where'd you locate that gold, young fellow? That's something we're keeping to ourselves. But we found it all right, didn't we, Bob? Sure did. Gold eye you got there? That's what it is. Let me ever look at it, huh? Sure. Go right ahead. Yeah. Piece of float. Uh huh. Found it in the gully. The real thing, is it lucky? Howdy, Hard Rock. <laughs> well, these fellas say it is. Uh, look to be rich, does it, Lucky? What do you think of it? Let's have a look at it. Sure, pass it around. <laughs> Ain't none of you fellas seen fool's gold before. You act like you're as green as these kids here. Fool's gold? Is that what it is, Lucky? Ever see gold that look like this, Hard Rock? You ought to know with all the prospecting you've done. <laughs> well, I'll be doggone. Them greenhorns come busting in here like they had something. <laughs> and what they got ain't nothing but iron pyrites. Wait, that, that must be a mistake somewhere. <laughs> sure, and you made it. You're, you're sure that ain't gold? How much cash you got out here? Why? Well, just to show you how sure I am, for every dollar you got, I'll lay you five that that ain't gold. Uh, take me up on it with having a save, mate. Better <laughs> <laughs> save your cash, young fellow. Yeah, Lucky ain't betting on nothing. This is a sure thing. Maybe next time you won't get took in. Well, are you going to bet? Well, I ain't doubting your word. You fellas ought to know, but... Gosh, Jim, and after all the plans we made. Uh-huh. But I reckon we should have known we couldn't be so lucky right off. <laughs> Forget it. You kids ain't the first fellas to get fooled. Yeah, come on down to the bar here. Me and Hard Rock will buy you both a drink. Well, thanks just the same, but me and Jim don't drink. Well, don't blame you none. That's just good sense. Well, step over here anyhow. Maybe we can give you fellas a few pointers about prospecting. Gosh, would you? <laughs> sure, come on. I guess me and Jim are pretty green, all right. <laughs> you didn't expect to learn everything to once, did you? 
How long have you fellas been with? Just a month. Uh, where'd you find that fool's gold? Well, with money, you better not to... say, Bob. Oh, shucks now. The only reason I asked was because me and Hard Rock have been figuring on going prospecting again ourselves. We just don't want to waste our time going where you fellas went. Oh. Besides, I thought maybe we could tip you off to a place where you might really strike something. Say, that'd be fine. Now, where'd you say you found this float? Why, it was north of here. You know where Turtle Creek is, don't you? Uh-huh. Well, it was the gully just off the creek. Above the rapids, before the creek goes through a sizable stretch of woods. Uh, you ever been up in there, Hard Rock? Sure, a dozen times. Did you mean it about giving us a tip where to go? Well, if I was you fellas, I'd go prospecting around the painted rock section. That'd be your best bet. Has gold been found there? No, but plenty of silver. Why don't you give it a try? What do you say, Jim? It won't hurt us any, I reckon. Is that where you fellas are going? Oh, we're likely to. Well, thanks a lot. It's been darn nice of you to put us straight. Oh, that's all right. And if we do find anything, we'll know where the credit goes. <laughs> Forget it. Only thing you want to remember is not to go high tailing for town the next time you pick up a chunk of fool's gold. <laughs> We've learned our lesson, I guess. Come on, Jim, let's get something to eat, then go down to the store and get some more supplies. All right. Afternoon, fellas. Maybe we'll be seeing you again. Oh, well, maybe you will. Good luck to you. Thanks. Well, Jim, we sure made fools out of ourselves that time. I wish that was all. Huh? That trip up north cost us plenty of cash. When we get through buying supplies again, we're going to be broke. Gosh, that's right. And if we don't have better luck this next trip, I mean, what we're going to do? Well, anyhow, we live. Huh? Speaking of us, stranger? Yes. What do you want? I was inside the cafe just now when you came in with that sample of ore. Ore? <laughs> Fool's gold, you mean. Have you still got it? Yeah, here it is. I don't know what I was hanging on to the blame stuff for. I'd like to look at it. What for? I've got an idea. It may amount to nothing, but I'd like to make sure. Here you are. You're welcome to it as far as we're concerned. Come on along, Bob. Hold on. You've got a knife there. Give it to me. But what are you going to do? There's a chance this piece of float is more valuable than you suppose. But they said inside it wasn't anything but iron pyrites. We'll soon see. Well, here's the knife. But I'll be doggone if I know what you're getting at. I'll show you. What are you doing? You ever heard of what the old timers call the jackknife of saying? Huh? What's that? Watch. He's pressing a rock with the tip of your knife, Jim. Stranger, you don't mean to say that gold ore after all, do you? Did you notice how soft the rock was? How easily the blade pressed in? Yeah, but what does that prove? Now look closely at the edge of the blade. See anything? Well, I don't. Do you, Bob? Can't say as I do. Good. But what in blazes are you trying These to... were iron pyrites. The edge of the blade would show a red rusty color. What's more, when I pressed the blade against this rock, it wouldn't have made an impression so easily. Did you hear that, Jim? It, why, it's gold after all. No. But you just said it was... I said this wasn't fool's gold. It isn't. Looks to me as though it were a sulfide of silver or copper, most likely the former. And that means that there's... That there's little doubt but what this float was broken off from an outcropping of silver ore. I'm almost positive this is silver, not copper. But... But inside there, that fellow called Lucky was even willing to bet me on You it. recall he was willing to bet this wasn't gold ore. That's right, Jim. But why would he act to blame sure that it was fool's gold? I think he was quite sure it wasn't. Huh? I noticed something you didn't. When you gave him this piece of ore, he scratched it across a ring he wore on his hand. That probably told him what he wanted to know. He, he tricked us? That wouldn't be easy to prove. It would do you no good if you could. Did he ask where you'd found this float? He did. He asked particular. I thought so. Gosh, what do we do? You said you found this in a gully. Uh-huh. This ore is smooth and shiny. That shows it was washed to the place where you found it. May have been washed into Turtle Creek, then into the gully during the spring floods. Yeah, that's likely. You've told Lucky and Hard Rock where you found this. Unless I'm mistaken, they'll be on their way to find the ledge it came from. They sure will if they really lied to us on purpose. But you have just as good a chance to locate that vein as they have. If I were you, I'd get back to that district as fast as I could and start my search. We'll do that, stranger. Gosh, I don't know just what to think. Well, don't get me wrong, stranger, but how are we to know you're telling us the truth? After all, it's just your word against them other fellas. You don't have to believe me. Get a fire assay made if you wish. Yeah, we can do that. But don't waste time. If you do, Lucky and Hard Rock will beat you to it. The fire assay suggested by the Lone Ranger proved to Bob and Jim the truth of his statements. The specimen of ore they had brought to town was rich in silver. When, on top of this, they learned that Lucky and Hard Rock had been seen on the trail to Turtle Creek, the last of their doubt disappeared. The two young men hastened back to the district and started an intensive search for the ledge from which the ore had come. For almost a week, however, they were unable to find any trace of it. And Gosh, Jim, I don't know whether we're going to find that vein or not. We sure haven't seen anything yet that looks like it. That float we found had to come from someplace. 
There ain't no use giving up. Don't you think we've got about as far from camp as we ought to today? Let's just look over the rest of this slope before we turn back, huh? I'm getting tired of walking. It ain't far. Say, you know, I've been wondering about something, Bob. Yeah? Why don't we run into Lucky and Hard Rock? They're around here. They must be. But since we've seen that one camp of theirs on the way here, there hasn't been a sign of them. I've been wondering, too. You don't suppose they're keeping out of sight on purpose, do you? They'd better. Oh, I don't reckon they're much as scared of us, but there's just two things I can think of. What's that, Jim? Well, for one thing, they might have found that ore vein and headed back to town to record it. Say, do you think they have? I can't say. And then again, they might have had to look around and give up. They had a couple days start on us, you know. Gosh, I'd feel a heap better if I knew they had. Here, give me that pick. See something? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. That look like it? No, I don't think it... Wait, look up above there. Huh? That outcrop and see where the sun strikes it? By gravy, Jim, if that ain't it, I'll eat my hat. Give me back that pick. Come on. The lead. You bet it is. Here. Gosh, and if I hadn't been kneeling down and if the sun hadn't struck it just right, we'd probably never have seen it. Break off some chunks. Yeah. That's it. Now, wait a minute. That's enough. Look here. Just like the float we found. There can't be no doubt about it. Jim, we're going to move our camp up here, build our location monuments, and first thing in the morning, one of us can head for town and file the papers. While the other keeps guard. And the first fellow tries to jump this claim, will get his head blowed off. Come on, Bob. Break off some more chunks. This here stuff makes the prettiest sight i ever seen. Silver, Bob, and I'll bet there's tons of it. Lucky by golly, them green horns located the vein. Yeah. And to think we were through here just two days ago without even noticing it. I had a hunch they'd be the ones to find it. That's why I said we should follow them. Well, what do we do now? Huh? I mean, do you think we ought to drive them off and take over? Or have you got some other scheme? Well, let's get out of here first. Keep to the woods so he won't be seen. Get up. Get along. Get along. Get up. Hard Rock, I got a notion we won't have to jump that claim. No? Well, we could probably get away with it. But afterwards, he'd likely go to court. And even if we won out, it'd cost us plenty cash. And what other way is there? How'd it be if they was to be hung for murder? <laughs> that their claim wouldn't do much good then, would it? Murder? But how are you going <laughs> to do that? Just leave it to me, partner. <laughs> when we get beyond sound of gunshot, I'll show you exactly what I got in my mind. I don't see why you can't tell me now, Lucky. Because it'd spoil it if I did. They can't hear the horses now. Come on, let's get going. Get up! Get up! Bob and Jim moved their camp to the newly discovered claim before sundown. Then, early in the morning, Jim saddled and began the journey back to Aurora. It was a three days trip, but when he entered town, he did not draw a rein until he had reached the office of the county clerk. Oh, oh there. Oh, boy. Stay there, boy. Hey, anybody here? Where's the clerk? You, Jim Graves? Huh? Oh, you're the sheriff, huh? That's me. Ain't the clerk supposed to be here? Did he step out or something? You won't be needing him, young fella. But what are Just you... Just stand still while I take this here hardware you're carrying. Hey, what's this for? Me. Reckon you won't start nothing now. Now, look here. Shut you... up. Lucky, is this the fella? That's one of them, Sheriff. Lucky, the other one stayed behind. Lucky. <laughs> Surprised to see me, eh? You must have figured you got me, too. Well, you didn't, you sneaking killer. Killer? What in the... Sheriff, what's this all about? Have you fellas gone crazy? You're under arrest. But... What for? For jumping Lucky's claim. And for killing my partner, Hard Rock. You'll hang, you polecat. You and that sidekick of yours will stretch hemp if I have to hang you myself. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. When young Jim Graves arrived at the office of the county clerk in the town of Aurora to file upon the claim discovered by himself and his partner, Bob Holt, he was met with a charge of murder. The sheriff, paying no attention to Jim's protests, took the young man to the county jail and thrust him into a cell. Get in there. Blast it, Sheriff. This is a frame-up. Never heard a killer yet that didn't say he was innocent. Well, that's I hear just like all the other pilgrims that come out here. You figure just because you ain't back east no more, you can get away with anything. Can't I say nothing for myself, Sheriff? What do you want to say? If Hard Rock's really been killed... He was. He's resting in Boot Hill right now. Well, even so, I never done it, and neither did Bob. And I'd like to know just why you're so all fired sure we did. I seen you do it. I was there at the time, wasn't I? You Keep was... still lucky, you too, young fella. Well, if it's reasons you want, I can give you two doggone good ones. Besides Lucky's testimony. What are they? Before you and your partner left town this last time, you talked plenty free about what you'd do when you met up with Lucky in Hard Rock again. If you know that much, you ought to know why we talked that way. The skunks cheated us or tried to. You can't talk that Lucky, way. Lucky, I you... said to keep still. Oh, all right. Yeah, I heard all about that part of it. Now, I ain't saying that they didn't pull a kind of sharp trick on you. But that ain't neither here nor there. The fact remains you threatened them and there's plenty of folks in town that heard you. That still don't prove nothing. It'll help. What's the other reason? One that'll convict you, sure. I happen to know for a fact that outside of Lucky and Hard Rock, you and your partner were the only fellows in the whole Turtle Creek section. How do you know? I had a rustler in here that broke jail. I thought maybe he might have headed that way, so I took out after him. We never seen you. Yeah, but I seen you. I never stopped to talk because I was in too much of a hurry. But I scoured that district clean. And like I said, you was the only four fellows there. Sheriff, I don't care who you seen and who you didn't. Me and Bob didn't jump no claim. We didn't kill nobody. Let me out, and by thunder, I'll find some way to show you this is just a put-up job. Just let me out and give me a chance at it. You're staying where you are. But, Sheriff... And in just about a week's time, you're going to have company. We're going after that partner of yours. And after the trial, there's going to be a double hanging. But when the Lone Ranger had learned of Jim Graves' danger, he had rejoined Tonto outside town and raced toward the distant claim where Bob Holt, unaware of what had happened, was awaiting Jim's return. Silver and Scout, urged on by their masters, made what was ordinarily a three days' journey in less than two. At the camp, the masked man and Tonto reined in while Bob watched them in alarm. Who, oh, Silver? Who, oh, oh, Scout? Who? Oh. 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 Up with your hands, both of you. I got you covered. Put that gun down, Bob. No, you don't. Just do like I told you and don't argue. All right, Tonto. Um, hey, you drop gun. Let go. Drop I'll take the gun. gun. You dirty outlaw. Let him go, Tonto. <laughs> He's disarmed. Uh, What's your game? We came here to help you. I think we can talk better now that I have your gun. Help me. It sure looks like it. The sheriff is on his way here huh? to arrest you. Your partner's already in jail. You're loco. Not only in jail, Bob, but on a charge of claim jumping and murder. That ain't so. I don't know what you figured a game by that kind of a story, but it won't do you no good. I can tell you that. It happens to be true, as you'll see when the sheriff arrives. I'll bet. I told you I came to help, and I mean it. Lucky Morgan is behind this. He shot his partner and plans to lay the blame on you and take over your claim when you're jailed. Wait a second. Yes? He ain't met up with you before someplace? I've heard that voice. Doggone if I ain't. Now, whereabouts was it? Never mind that. You've got to believe what I've told you. I don't know why I should. Because if you don't, both you and Jim will hang. How come you know so much? For reasons of our own, Tonto and I trailed you when you came here. We were afraid you might have trouble with Lucky and Hard Rock. We expected an attack if you found this outcropping and attempted to claim it. We didn't know that Lucky would murder his own partner to get this vein. Yeah? That's why we didn't keep track of Lucky and why I didn't know until Jim was arrested in town that Hard Rock had been killed. Say, are you really serious about all this? I've been trying to convince you that I am. Well, go on. The point is just this. Tonto and I know that you and Jim are innocent. We didn't see the killing, of course. But as you, Jim, Lucky, and Hard Rock were the only ones in this district, and you and Jim are innocent, then Lucky has to be the killer. I don't get all this. Lucky Morgan's a crook, all right. There ain't nobody got more reason to know it than what I have. But you don't actually mean to stand there and tell me he'd do in his own sidekick, do you? This looks to me like a rich strike you've made here. It wouldn't be the first time men have been murdered for wealth. But in cold blood... In cold blood or not, the fact remains that it happened. 
If you don't take action, you and Jim will pay for it. Why should a stranger like you worry about what happens to us? That doesn't matter. But what are you interfering Are you going for? to take steps to protect yourself, or aren't you? You're giving me this straight. I, I gotta do something. And the only way you can clear yourself and Jim is to convict Lucky. How? We don't know where Hard Rock was shot. There were no witnesses who could testify in your favor. Lucky certainly won't confess willingly without good cause. Gosh, it leaves us in a fix. You have one chance to escape. What's that? The sheriff should arrive here sometime tomorrow. You'll know as soon as you see him that I've been telling you the truth. Well? He'll accuse you of being guilty of the killing, too. And when he does that? And when he does that, Bob, your one chance to prove your innocence is to admit your guilt. Bob, at first puzzled by the masked man's statement that he could not be cleared until he had confessed to the murder, soon understood what was in the Lone Ranger's mind. Bob agreed to carry out the plan, and the masked man, accompanied by Tonto, disappeared. When the sheriff and Lucky rode up the next day, Bob hailed them with no visible concern. Hi there, Sheriff. Howdy, Morgan. You're under arrest for murder, Holt. Careful what you say, because maybe you'll be used again against your trial. I and mean, don't try to put up a fight, because you're going to join your murdering partner in jail. He's just arrested and we'll have to shoot you down. You don't see me resisting, do you? You admit you killed Hard Rock, huh? Shucks, what's the use of denying it? Huh? What's that you said? You hard of hearing, Lucky? I said, what's the use of denying I killed Hard Rock? You're admitting it. Can't you get anything through that thick skull of yours? Of course I am. Well, I'll oh, be... It's a... a blame funny thing. Huh? What's funny? You seen us coming here, didn't you? Sure I did. Then you must have known why we was coming here. Uh-huh, I knew that, too. Then why didn't you try to make a break? Why'd you just stand and wait for? Well, I got my reasons. You got reasons, you say? Sure. Does that worry you, Lucky? Oh, no, no. Don't worry me none. Why should it? I just thought maybe it would. Now, look here. If you've got friends or something, as you're figuring will bust you loose, you can forget about them. You ain't going to get loose. You're wearing handcuffs the whole trip back. And when we have to camp at night, me and Lucky are taking turns guarding you. Now, hold out your hands. Sure. There. Now, I'd just like to see you get out of them. Golly, Sheriff, you got me all wrong. I ain't going to try to escape. And I ain't got no friends that are planning on helping me get loose. Fact is, Sheriff... <laughs> Fact is, I'm insisting on you jailing me for what I've done. I won't stand for nothing else. You beat anything i ever seen before. He's up to something, Sheriff. He must be. Unless he's crazy. Lucky I ain't crazy. You're sure acting. I ain't crazy, and I got a reason for what I'm doing, like I said before. You ready to go back, Sheriff? Yeah, ain't nothing to stop us, I reckon. Bring this fellow's horse over here, Lucky. Yeah. I don't know. What's that, Sheriff? Blasted, I don't know what to make of you. I've been a lawman the past ten years. By and large, I'd figured I'd met up with every kind of crook and killer there was. But you're sure a new one on me. Just what are you scheming? <laughs> Suppose you wait and see. Here's the horse, Sheriff. Hey, get to the saddle. <laughs> lucky. Huh? <laughs> Blast it, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Nothing much, Lucky. <laughs> you... <laughs> but I can't help thinking of the surprise you're going to get before we reach town. <laughs> Well, the more I think about it, the funnier it gets. <laughs> uh, maybe it won't seem so funny when you're stretching rope. <laughs> if I stretch rope. So you are planning on escaping. I ain't, Sheriff. I give you my word I ain't. Uh, <laughs> if you can't talk sense, and I ain't got the time to listen to you. All I gotta say is that the first sign of a trick, you're getting drilled. Now just think that over. Let's go. Get up there. Get, get up there. Come on. Get up. Get up. Lucky, knowing himself guilty and Bob innocent, was completely mystified by the young miner's attitude. That night, when they made camp, Lucky had little to say over the evening meal. He chose to stand the first watch, and then, when the regular breathing of his two companions revealed that they were asleep, he moved swiftly and silently. Uh, wake up. Wake up, I tell you. Huh? What's up? Keep your blasted voice down. Let me sleep. Go away, won't you? You and me are going to have a little talk. You see that grove over there? Oh, go on, leave me alone, won't you? I got a shooting iron again your side. What for? Just to make sure you do like I say. If you don't, I'm pulling the trigger and telling the sheriff I shot while you was trying to escape. But I don't see Are what you... Are going to move? Yeah, it don't look like I got much choice. Quiet. Which way? To that grove, like I said. Now, come on, walk ahead of me. How much farther I got to go? To where we are talking won't wake the sheriff. We ain't got nothing to talk about. That's your notion. I got a different one. Go on, keep moving. You sure a stubborn cuss. And a blame bad one to try to trick. Which saying you're going to find out right sudden. Huh? Trick? What are you talking about? Don't put on. You savvy, all right. Yeah, this'll do. Well, say what you have to say, then let me get back to sleep. I'm tired enough to sleep standing up. Just what's the idea? Huh? Don't pretend. What are you up to? 
What scheme are you figuring to pull? You ain't making yourself real plain, Lucky. What do you mean, scheme? Look here, blast you. I got this here gun in your handcuffed. All I got to do is shoot and you're done for. Now start talking. I don't mind. What should I say? You got some trick up your sleeve and I aim to find it out. Now why did you tell the sheriff back at the claim that you killed Hard Rock? <laughs> because I did. Shucks, you said so yourself. Sure, I said you did. As far as a sheriff will ever know, that's the way it's going to be written down in the record. Well, then. But you know and I know that it was me that killed Hard Rock, not you. And you wouldn't claim you had unless there was something behind it. Now, what was it? That's my business. It was. Now, I'm making it mine. And there's another thing. When me and the sheriff rode up to your camp, you acted like you was expecting us. It even a- didn't even act surprised when he heard about the killing and Jim being jailed. How come you found out? Well, I got ways of learning things. <laughs> Don't forget this gun. <laughs> that ain't no reason to get hasty. Tell you what I'll do. You just answer me one question, and I'll give you the straight answer to all of yours. Is it fair enough? What question? Well, the way I got things figured is like this. You drilled hard rock so you could get me and Jim hung and you could jump our claim. Is that right? Sure, it's right. Why else do you think I'd have done it? That all you're going to ask? It's enough, I reckon. Now, you answer what I asked you before. Lucky I'd done what I did, so... Hey, what was that? Have you heard enough, Sheriff? Every blame thing I need to know. You skunk, lucky reach. What in blame? Trick! And proper. You ain't getting me out. Watch out. You're getting yours, Holt. Oh! I warned you. Grab the gun he dropped, Tonto. Uh-huh. Here, run. Um, you low Save down. Save your wind. Oh. I got you. Hold on to him, Sheriff. You just bet I will. Now stand still, blast you. Another move out of you, and I'll save the county the expense of a trial. Let me loose. Let go of me. Quit your hollering. Yeah. You was asking me some questions just a minute back, Lucky. Ain't you interested no more in what the answers are? Just <laughs> leave me loose. <laughs> well, you're going to listen whether you like to or not. The scheme was a masked man. He knew doggone well that you'd get so blame curious and suspicious all at the same time that you'd have to try and find out what the trap was. You so what he done was to make you so darn anxious to stay out of a trap that you walked right into it. <laughs> the second he seen us leave together, he woke up the sheriff and brought him along where he could hear what was being said. Well, make him pay. Well, maybe you will, Lucky. But you're going to hang first. <laughs> but after that, of course, you're welcome to do anything you've got a mind to. I The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.